that. Now, it is estimated that over 6 million people in the UK have dyslexia. Defined as a learning difficulty, many people refer to as a hidden disability. How do you feel about that? Well, A, it shouldn't be a disability. I don't see it as a disability at all. I see it as a real feather in my cap being dyslexic. I love being dyslexic. I'm very proud of being dyslexic. I think it makes me who I am. I mm. think half the things that I'm actually quite good at in life are because I'm dyslexic. So. Which is exactly what we're about to talk yeah. about now. A businessman and entrepreneur, Sir Richard Branson, who himself is dyslexic, is working with the founder of Made by Dyslexia, Kate Griggs, to help change people's perception. So uh, thank you, Kate. Thank you, Richard, for, for joining both. us today. Yeah, Come to you, Richard, in just a second. Uh, Kate, you're the, the founder and CEO of the charity Made by Dyslexia. Um, what, what are your aims? What is it that you would like to now achieve? We would uh, like to help everybody to understand the whole picture of dyslexia. We all know about the challenges with learning to read and spelling and the things that we struggle with at school. Um, but also with dyslexia come incredible strengths and those strengths are super valuable in life and particularly very valuable in the new world of work. We're very good at all of the soft skills, things like communicating, innovating, um, reasoning, uh, all of those skills that the workplace is really looking for. So we, we need to change the way we see dyslexia and have it as this balanced focus of challenges that we know how to support and then the real strengths that we definitely have. Well, thank goodness for you, because you've sort of really made changes in this arena, really, because you yourself are dyslexic. When you were at school, I think it was picked up when you were about nine years old, you moved to a different school and they were brilliant and they helped you really find your strengths. I mean, you were really one of the lucky ones, actually, because an awful lot of people didn't get that school. I didn't have my dyslexia picked up till really quite late. Um, but what shocked you was when your son was diagnosed with dyslexia and you realised that within that sort of 30 year time period, nothing had changed, nothing was being done, nothing was different. No, and that's, that's what I found so shocking, the fact that um, my school, my second school, transformed my life so simply by giving me the right teaching methods and really focusing on strengths that I just couldn't believe that when my son was having problems, nobody was trained in dyslexia and they were calling, labelling him with all the things that I was labelled, you know, not very bright, um, a bit lazy, all the things that tend to happen. So that's really when my mission started to... Yeah to make sure all teachers are trained. And as a charity, we've got free teacher training, so every teacher can be trained to understand how to spot and support dyslexia. But it is extraordinary, isn't it? When you look at your schooling, you had one school that left you feeling... You, you actually say that you uh, carried a sense of failure. Um, and so that, you know, that could have stayed with you for your entire life. Then you go to another school and they literally say, right, OK, well, that's that's you, that's who you are, let's find out your strengths. And as you say, that can transform a young life. It is completely transformative. It's one of the, one of the things that we can do so simply to solve a big problem um, and actually solve it very simply by training teachers and making sure that the world understands dyslexia as a strength, which is what this campaign is all about today. The workplace is finally realising that. And we do need to make sure that education catches up. But it is anybody with dyslexic children, focus on their strengths, mm. look at all the brilliant things that they can do because they will take them far in life. Well, 40% of entrepreneurs are dyslexic. Um, this seems like a very good time to bring uh, Richard in to talk about you and your experience growing up, actually, because when you were at school, you had a tough time, didn't you? Yes, I, I um, was so hopeless at um, normal sort of schoolwork uh, that I ended up at age 15 deciding to leave school um, uh, and do the things that I was interested in. Um, and. Uh, and, you know, once I started putting my dyslexic uh, uh, thinking uh, brain uh, to things that I was interested in, I, I think I started to excel at them. Um, and uh, I was a great, uh, you know, I think I was quite creative. Um, uh, I was great at getting a good group of people around me and motivating them well. Um, and, you know, so bizarrely, the first, first thing I started was a magazine um, for young people to try to campaign against the antiquated education system of, of those days, which is still a little bit antiquated, um, to campaign against the Vietnamese War and so on. Um, uh, but, you know, what, what I've realised over the years is that being a dyslexic thinker uh, is something that we should all be blessed with, and that when parents are told that they're 
uh, son or daughter a dyslexic, they should rejoice. Um, you know, they should tell them that they're going to have a little bit of a difficult time. It's doing the some of the sort of <laughs> fundamentals at school. Um, but but they should be concentrating soon after that on the things that they're, they're good at and, and they will be they will excel at them. Well, um, LinkedIn uh, has uh, uh, dyslexic thinking now is recognised as a as a skill, um, and um, and it's you so can good. add that skill to your profile and, and be and be proud to wave that flag. Dictionary.com has added uh, dyslexic thinking uh, as an official term. Uh, you say, Richard, I mean, you spend your time in boardrooms. You hire people. You look for new, young, creative talent. Um, how important do you think it is? in the workplace that you run? I think it's very important. I mean, we, we, you know, what the, what the world's going to need in the future is creative people. Um, I mean, like, I couldn't look at a balance sheet, um, but I knew that uh, if we created an airline that was better than British Airways, then this was about 38, 39, 40 years ago, um, that, that, that people would come to it. So. You know, I thought, screw that. Let's get a plane and see see whether I'm right. <laughs> and you know, if we can build it, build a build a cruise company that's you know better than the big cruise companies, you know, let, let's just try it. If we can build a space company that's you know that that that, that offers um, trips to spaces for more people, um, it may well succeed. So it didn't matter that I wasn't uh, good on a balance sheet. Well, it's um, interesting what, you. I, you mentioned the you mentioned the balance sheet because um, because once again with dyslexia and, and Holly's been very honest in the past and said you know there are times you think oh you know I, I, I feel embarrassed here um, that that it, it's it is a, it once again finding a way through or finding people that can help you find a way through you had that in the boardroom when someone explained to you the difference between net and gross didn't you yeah I was fifty years old um, we had one of the uh, biggest group of private companies in Europe by then, and um, and I asked the question, is that good news or bad news? And and the director took me out of the boardroom and got a sheet of paper out, and he penciled the sheet of paper in blue, and then he put uh, a net in the uh, in the blue paper and put some little fish in the net. He said, Richard, you're you know you don't know the difference between net and gross. The fish in the net is your net turnover um, and the rest I'm afraid you haven't caught is the ocean uh, that's the, that's your gross turnover and I went got it and ever since then I've been name dropping net and gross in every <laughs> meeting I have. But that's the thing isn't it it's just a different way of learning and that's a very, that actually we've explained there is a very visual way of explaining yeah. something and that's where the sort of education needs to catch up a little bit but like you said find your strengths and being dyslexic having dyslexic thinking is is equally a strength the same as as other people with different things. Absolutely. You know, we all think differently. Dyslexics think brilliantly. And I would urge every single dyslexic person that's on LinkedIn, go on and add it to your, your profile. And, and parents, there's lots of information, free information on our website to discover what your child's superpower is as well. So let's just change that narrative and let's see it as this incredible way of thinking. Mm. Just finally, um, Sir Richard, so do you, do you think that you would have been as successful had you not been dyslexic? No, I don't think so. I, I, I think that, um, you know, it's enabled, enabled me to be a really good delegator, for instance, which I think is, is a, a very important skill of, of a leader. Um, it's enabled me to, you know, look for the best in people and, and, and really appreciate the, the, their, their skills. Um, and to be honest, if I hadn't actually left, you know, decided to leave school at 15, um, the, the rest wouldn't have happened. My education uh, happened in the real world. And, and, and I think that does say something about education generally. It's not just for dyslexic people. We've got to, uh, you know, try to make sure that education is more more creative and more relevant um, to everybody. Um, and um, and that's another challenge I know that Kate and others are trying to do. Thank you. Thank you Thank both. you both. Thank you. Thank you.